What's going on, everybody? Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. Lots to go over today. As I didn't make a video yesterday, I want to cover what is happening inside the market as we finally broke out of this four week back and forth channel. Now, we broke out to the downside previously after CPI, only to get snapped back right in it. I'm going to go over my game plan ahead of obviously FOMC and midterms that are coming up very shortly. And we are about to wrap up. The biggest week of the earnings season. I'll cover everything, guys, for you A to Z. So let's get right into it. First off, this is the channel that we've talked about for quite some time, okay? It was really between that 3585 and 3820, all right, on ES, which is the SPY futures. It's a little more liquid. That's like why I like to cover it. However, I know most of you look at the SPY. If you don't play SPY, you at least look at it. It gives good indication of where the market is headed and what the overall market is doing. So I have these two levels here, this 356 to 380 we've talked about for quite some time. Once we broke into it on the 21st, we came back up to retest that. That old support becomes new resistance, and here we were just bouncing off it in between. Now, as I stated earlier in the video, this was CPI, heavy hit to the downside, bounced off that 350, a big psychological level of support, only to go right back into the channel, move back up to the upside, and here we are finally breaking over that 380 yesterday okay now i had said to everybody inside of the group talking about these channels i kind of go over a little bit of notes as well as our pre-market picks every single day i said i in order to have some longer term confidence i want to see this level get retested okay so currently we really really haven't gotten that 380 retest maybe a little bit in after hours yesterday after both microsoft and google did miss we have meta earnings that came out just a few moments ago that missed as well. It's not really pulling down the market uh, like meta or I'm sorry, like Google and uh, Microsoft did yesterday. But we really haven't gotten that full confirmation, especially off that 3820 uh, on ES as well. I want to see that hold just a little bit better. OK, and that indicates that that old resistance become new support. That would give us a uh, room to go for your next leg up. Obviously, the next uh, target would be that 389 to 390 on SPY for us to continue to move to the upside. Now, obviously, like I said at the beginning of the video, we do have FOMC and midterms coming up. A lot can change. OK, we did just have the Bank of Canada. Uh, had kind of <laughs> really go a little bit dovish. They went, they raised 50 basis points instead of the 75 that's expected. That's a very dovish action. How the market would normally would react if we do are a little bit more dovish. That means that we're 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 backing off of this this you know uh, quantitative tightening, this this aggressive uh, monetary policy that the Federal Reserve has, and it is generally bullish for the markets. Okay, do I believe that we warrant a 50 basis point hike outside of the 75? That last time in, I had said to everybody and showed you on the charts, it's the market is 100% priced in for a 75 basis point hike. Well, that's where the adverse effect happens, okay? You have a couple things. First of all, consumer confidence, which just came out, okay, recently is, you know, it fell, all right? Inflation is taking a toll. It's only getting more out of control, okay? You have the strategic reserve, um, you know, that are, are getting really tapped into almost nothing as of right now. All right, and as well as, as well as the winter heating, that it's only going to put more pressure. Okay, food prices continue to rise. All right, as diesel just continues to go out of control. Where I am in Connecticut, it's almost six dollars a gallon for diesel. All right, and even though the price of gasoline has fallen, diesel hasn't. And clearly, every all of our commodities get transported to the store by diesel fuel. Okay, those tractor trailers. All right, burning that. So obviously, that affects it. What is going to happen from that really remains to be unseen. But from a strategic you know, technical standpoint, I really want to see this 380 hold or right, as confidence to continue to go long. OK, and if it if we do break below it, then I would really want to see that retest. OK, that confirm that it isn't just a fake out to the downside and we're going to continue to move higher. It's going to come down, break through, curl back, retest, and it's going to hold for a continuation back into this channel for a downside move, okay? So, like I said, look for that to happen. Obviously, it's the biggest week of earnings that we're going to get through. A lot of our tech names are reporting. All right, Boeing was another one that was heavily weighted. Seems like their earnings really weren't that bad. I will kind of point out a little bit what happened today. Okay, you see this little, let me zoom over for you guys. You see this little telephone right here? That's the earnings call when it happens. Clearly, whatever the CEO said, if he was even on the earnings call, but whatever the board had said, 
okay, during that earnings call really just made investors feel very uneasy. Okay, there are a few CEOs out there that are very good at, you know, reassuring their investors that they're, they're, they're headed in the right direction, that things are going well, whatever was said on that earnings call did not go well. Okay, so in order to stay up to date on the um, on where the interest rates are, are set to, to rise on the November 2nd meeting, you can check out the CME group.com, you can go ahead and Google that what the, the projections for the target fund rate is, like I had mentioned earlier, and I'll mention it again, I really feel that if it comes in does at that 50 basis points investors are going to potentially get a little pop off the open at, you know as it's a, a monetary easing however just know that eh, there's been zero progress with inflation we've seen that by the cpi numbers you've seen that by you know all the bills that you're paying the gas that you're putting in your vehicles okay and you know just your commodities your everyday commodities such as food all right and and clothing you know the price is continuing to rise up it's only going to get inflation to be even more out of control all right, every country is a little bit different. So because that was stated, doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to happen for us. There is obviously an adverse you know, effect to this that you know, we are having liquidity issues inside the bond market. Jan Yellen has made that very aware. I do think we have a little bit more time before any type of decision is made. There still is a lot of articles out there talking about a Fed pivot. But like I said, guys, the charts, even though macros you know, you know, can severely... Um, you know, change how a chart moves, the charts still are going to flow very, very smoothly. Okay, so go back and look at this, pay attention to this, plan out some of your trades, plan out some of your executions, look at other stocks that are heavily hit, and that are sitting at, you know, you know, crucial points that might break above certain levels that you could add to your long term portfolios over a slow period of time. I do not think 350 is the bottom. I said 350 a long time ago, especially everybody inside the group ever since about that February, March, you know, I'd said that, listen, 350 was my target, 350 was my target. Unfortunately, from a technical standpoint, things still show a little bit more room to the downside that does get invalidated if we you know, break over that, maybe that 410, 412 level, continue to move to the upside. But what's even more important is the macros haven't changed, okay? And there's one thing, one, don't fight the, 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 the tape, which is a very you know, uh, popular saying, but it's also don't fight the Fed. Okay, and we're seeing that the Fed is still continuing to move in that direction. So you've got to continue to play the charts uh, moving forward. So guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.